All right, uh, good afternoon. It's so nice to be here on Saturday, July 1st. I um, want to just give you guys a quick update from a Senate Democrats' perspective on how everything is going. My name is Heather Staines. I represent the 7th District. Um, it's the northernmost lakefront district in the city of Chicago. One of the appropriation chairs, uh, Andy Menard is another appropriation chair. Donnie Trotter has been our lead negotiator for a long time, and Toy Hutchinson's our revenue chair. So the four of us have been involved in many of the negotiation meetings that have been happening. Uh, I think we were all in the building until 11 or 11.15 last night, um, making enormous progress. Um, I think uh, we literally just um, got a, another briefing update from our budget director, Becky Locker, for our staff. They have uh, been meeting with all four caucuses. We think we are really uh, about nailed down now on all the numbers for the budget and revenue side of this. I think we're making tremendous progress and feel like they've been really um, good conversations that have been making progress um, going forward in the negotiations. Very hopeful. Our expectation and understanding is now that the budget piece is getting pretty much nailed down. There may be a few tweaks here and there, but I think we've got the whole contours of it in pretty good shape. That was sort of key now to maybe be able to finalize a few of the other pieces. Uh, I believe that workers' compensation still has some outstanding negotiations. They wanted to make sure we got where we needed to be on the budget before they finalized some of the workers' compensation items. Now that we've done that, that's going to be happening. The leaders are meeting again at 3 o'clock today. They're probably meeting um, as we're speaking right now. That had been the plan and the schedule. Um, I understand, too, that the property tax negotiations have been very close. Um, I, I don't know exactly where they stand, but I know there's been a lot of discussion of that. It's a very important item um, to, I think, everybody to provide some property tax relief, and that's getting very close as well. So really just here to let you know and you know, ultimately answer any questions, Andy has been very closely involved, too. Senate Bill 1 negotiations on education funding has been critically important to our caucus, I think, as well as the entire state and for the superintendents around the state who are supporting this. I'm going to turn it over to Andy, uh, and then I think Toy and Donnie are each going to be speaking as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Staines. Uh, last name is Menar, M-A-N-A-R. First name is Andy. I represent the 48th District here in Springfield, Decatur, and the counties to the south. Um, I'll be brief. Um, uh, we spent a lot of time with our Republican colleagues uh, from both the House and the Senate yesterday. Uh, hours and hours, uh, sifting through uh, important details of both uh, the spending plan uh, that was talked about and the revenue plan that was talked about. Uh, I can't express uh, the progress uh, that was made to you and how important uh, that was yesterday when we left the building uh, pretty late last night. I think I got home at about 1 in the morning. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I think we had a very productive day yesterday, and I think it's important that uh, that uh, the legislature in both chambers uh, don't go to a place of finger pointing at this moment. Uh, we have to realize that we are two years uh, now going on our third year without a complete budget in place. And given the progress that was made yesterday, uh, the last thing that we need today is uh, finger pointing from, from either side. Um, as I said, yesterday was, uh, was spent uh, for, for us with our Republican colleagues from both the House and the Senate on any number of issues. Uh, we left here last night uh, with a, a sense of progress and a sense of hope that we could wrap this, wrap this up. Uh, so again, I would just urge everyone in both chambers and uh, both parties uh, to uh, just strive for slow and steady progress so that we can bring some finality to uh, what has been a fiscal impasse that has gone on for, for far too long. Uh, with respect to Senate Bill 1, uh, we are still um, looking through uh, the details of proposals that have been given to us uh, from our Republican colleagues in both the House and the Senate. Uh, we understand that that is a critical piece uh, for uh, not just uh, them, but obviously for us. Uh, both uh, the Senate President and Speaker Madigan have said this is an absolute uh, requirement for a budget agreement. Uh, nonetheless, we have received uh, any number of proposals as, as late as our last uh, meeting uh, last evening, uh, and we're looking through those. And again, we are hopeful that we can come to a resolution uh, so that not only we can have a balanced spending plan in place, but we can also end the worst and least equitable system of school funding in the country. Senator Trotter. 
Yes, thank you, uh, Senator Menard. I'm a state senator, Don Trotter. I'm assistant majority leader. My district goes from southeast side of Chicago to Kankakee, Illinois. But that's really secondary to what this is all about. It's not from where I'm elected because what's happening here uh, impacts on all of the state. It's not just my district. We, we know that uh, people are suffering, our universities, no matter what corner of the state it's in, uh, our, our education system, K-12, uh, is being destroyed, not just in Chicago, but downstate as well. There, people know that violence isn't just in the city of Chicago, it's throughout the state, and we certainly need mental health dollars. And that being the point is, uh, the discussions that are going on now, we've heard them. It's been going on for too long. It's been going on now. It's going into the third year. So it, it is time for all of us to act. It's not time to be pointing fingers. It's time to listen to what is happening in our community and what is not happening. Uh, it's imperative that we go forward uh, in this protracted battle uh, and ensure that the individuals of our state are the recipients of all the good things that we can do and uh, in, ensure that there's going to be a quality of life that they want to raise their children in. So we have a lot of work to do, but again, uh, it is not because individuals do not know what the situation is. Uh, we, we cannot keep on repeating uh, those discussions that have taken us nowhere. We should uh, go forward with the uh, positive discussions that we've been working on. I'll go last because nobody wants to talk about what I want to talk about, which happens to be taxes. Um, and, you know, we can say, we can use the word revenue if you like. We can use the word taxes if we like. We, anybody who believes that this situation is going to be handled without uh, raising the required revenue for our core functions of government either hasn't been reading the news or just really doesn't care to have this thing be over. I don't quite understand that, but right now if you – are arguing for an austerity budget, that's what we're living with. And what we're living with is an imminent downgrading status and colleges getting ready to lose their accreditations and all the parade of horribles that we've been talking about. So today, you know, having been in the building again, we were here very late last night and we, I think we all fully expected to come in hoping that this would be um, the day that it would be done. But the biggest thing that is politicized in this really is the revenue situation. And that is something that's going to have to happen with both parties' participation, period. There is no way around it. It's going to take all hands on deck, as many hands on deck as we can possibly get to get this handled. So I echo everything that my colleague said in that we're here, we're waiting, we're ready, um, and that we're continuing to work in good faith to get to the point where we can um, stabilize what's happening in the state of Illinois. I know there's not a single person in this building that doesn't go home and say, especially when we travel anywhere else, that I'm from the great state of Illinois. And we need to all remember that right now because that's what's at stake. Not just my district, not just somebody else's district, not just my children, not just your children, not just my school district or just your school district. This is the state of Illinois. And it needs us to be better than we ever were. So we're, we're really urging um, for cooler heads to prevail and for us not to devolve into what has exactly um, knocked us off course all this entire time when we make political arguments and not policy ones. And we make um, winning the gotcha game more important than saving the state. So we're here. And we're, and we're we're ready to end this. So we're just urging calm. Okay, so what happened? What happened? You leave the building last night at 11 o'clock. Things are going fairly well. You get home at 1 a.m. Then the RF came home, I understand that. But we had to breathe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should take a nap. <laughs> what the heck happened today? All right, the Republicans are just here, and they said Madigan's slamming on the brakes. Is it the speaker? So, from my view, first of all, we in the Senate, as you know, uh, we were ready to vote on the entire budget package back in January. We were ready to vote in March. We were ready to vote in May and did in May. Didn't get 
uh, entire bipartisan. There has been a long time coming in us trying to get the Republicans entirely on board negotiating and moving forward on an entire package. It, as we've all seen, has been an enormous challenge getting, you know, trying to get the very disparate views on how we should solve this um, addressed in a way that everyone can put votes on all the parts of the package. It's just an enormous challenge, as we've seen. We in the Senate know that. We've experienced it. Um, I believe we're actually getting there. Um, and again, people have very different views uh, and ideologies about how we should be um, moving the state forward. So trying to do this in a way where every single one of the caucuses is going to be sharing in the votes on every single one of these bills is just, quite frankly, an enormous challenge. And I actually do feel um, that we are uh, have been knocking each of the items off the list and getting to the point where we're going to be able to get all four caucuses doing that. I think the vote we saw in the House on the appropriation side demonstrated that. They finally got joint participation. We hadn't had that yet on an appropriation. Now that went back to the drawing board and has been getting renegotiated. I believe we are now sort of nailing that down as of today. I do believe all four caucuses believe where we're there, where we're at in that, um, is at a good place. And that, as I say, has been freeing up the ability now to go and to try to finalize the workers' compensation. I don't think this is time to try to lay blame on whether it's that the governor keeps adding more items or that the speaker's slow walking it. That, to my mind, is not productive. What I've actually been seeing, I, I don't think so. I don't. I think everybody knows how critically important. I believe that all of our colleagues, the majority, if not every single one of the colleagues that are sitting on the floor right now, want to solve the problem for the state. It's horrible what's happening across the state. We know how horrible it is. And I think everybody in those chambers, both Democrats, Republicans, right now are unified in wanting to get us um, to vote. I really honestly believe that and think that's going to be what's happening. This is the bottom line is not getting us. And, okay. and, and Madigan told everybody, to be quiet, yep. Madigan told everybody today, you're not going to vote on anything today, you're not going to vote on anything tomorrow, and you guys aren't coming back on Monday. So, I mean, this doesn't sound like you're going to Well, I, I believe we are. And I believe that we, so the, spe the, the leaders, because we don't actually have bills drafted yet to vote on. There's not actually bills drafted entirely yet to vote on. Literally just got, got the briefing right now on finally after we sort of got a conceptual agreement on the budget this morning, staff had to go back work. There were a few items that they needed to sort of get the numbers from Gombe and see exactly how things were working and get to an agreement. Heard just literally right as I was walking in here that that's happened. We think we can now start putting those things into bill form. That's what it takes to then get to an agreement. Um, and those same kinds of conversations are still happening around all these other elements. As Andy, Senator Monar was talking about, Senate Bill 1, there's other items before the governor is willing to say he's going to move forward with Senate Bill 1. There's other items they brought to the table just this week that they want agreement on. They've been negotiating that. I believe they were making some real progress in getting to some agreement on that. You then have to turn that into bill form. There's just, there's a lot here. There's a lot of different pieces of legislation and items that are getting addressed. And who else wants to add to, yeah, to this? You, those people who talk to our public, you don't need to stop. It, there are not 177 individuals on the negotiating team. You know, their ideas are, are being actually articulated through the team that is there. We're wasting their time, your time, and, and giving false narrative that everyone needs to be sitting here while this package is coming together. So, so we, we certainly have come a long way uh, we have the, the Senate, the Illinois Senate, certainly has put together um, a, a template which we're all working on, the House Democrats and Re Senate Re uh, Republicans and, and Senate Democrats as well, uh, Senate Repu House Republicans as well, are, are, are all working together to bring this together. But okay. it's just not there yet. So, Senator Potter, is this a matter of the full general assembly is going to go home until Monday, but you, the kind of the leaders in negotiating, how many more meetings until we're there, and is there any fear that as the bills are being drafted, as you're making this, that because numbers aren't here, though, there won't be the pressure to get it done, or they'll come home, not enough people will come back? I mean, it just seems to leave a lot. I think that's why there's this you know, th this narrative. I feel like we're all kind of on the floor that people are going to... Right, and, and, and yeah, well, again, I mean, that's part of it. Uh, the thing, are, we are adults, and, and, and we also have lives as well. Yes, this is, this is the career that we've chosen, and, and yes, we're, uh, we're speaking on behalf of the 13 million people that are in the state of Illinois. But at the same time, 
um, putting us in a corner and saying locking the door and it is going to make us work any harder than what we do uh, is, is a misnomer. That, that is not going to happen. I mean, the, the work is being done. Ideas have been put on the table and they've been articulated by our leadership teams. On Senate Bill 1, Rich? Yeah. Sure. Um, um, th there were six things. Okay. Um, three that deal specifically with the mechanics of our proposal and three issues that uh, don't uh, affect what was passed by the General Assembly. So three things that deal with the proposal, the mechanics of our for formula uh, proposal was passed, three things that don't. So um, those were given to us uh, in the past several days. Uh, we spent a lot of time yesterday going through the details of those proposals. Um, I believe that those proposals were given to us in complete sincerity from our legislative colleagues on the Republican side, uh, not from the governor's office, in an attempt to try to forge a compromise that would afford uh, the governor the ability to sign Senate Bill 1. That's how it was described to us. So I take those things seriously because obviously we're not going to end our system today without the governor's signature. We all acknowledge that. Um, it takes a governor's signature to make something a law. So we are working through those things. Uh, would we have liked to have seen those things uh, months ago? Of course, of course. Uh, the Senate Republicans and the Republicans came up with the school funding proposal in detail three weeks after we adjourned the regular session. Uh, but uh, I do believe that what they brought to the table recently is a sincere effort, and that's why we're giving it a fair shake, and we're working with them to, to work through it. And the motion has never been resolved? It has not been resolved. Can it be? Um, I believe it can be resolved. I'm committed to getting it resolved. Um, I'm committed to compromise, as are all of us, as a team for our caucus and all of the meetings that we've attended. Uh, from revenue discussions to spending discussions uh, to other issues beyond just the budget like school funding or workers' comp. Senator Raul has spent hours with that. So uh, we're all committed to compromise, uh, but uh, sooner or later it has to come to some closure, and uh, we have to end what has happened. And uh, that's why we're here to say let's not get into a position to where uh, this has devolved again into finger-pointing, um, everyone should just remain calm and we should keep our eye on the ball and we should get this done immediately. And the immediately look like it's going to be, uh, the first chance is going to be on Monday. Well, there's something I, I still don't understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. I still don't understand how we got from Friday being bipartisan and Friday evening being ready to make a lot of progress, ready to come back Saturday and make points, ready to really make progress. And then everybody got here Saturday and really not how it is. And people are, some people are madder than others about this. I'm not understanding how we go from Friday expecting to uh, on Saturday being disappointed. Well, I'll give you my take, Dave, and this is just, uh, uh, this is just mine. Um, we weren't done. We weren't done. And that's not a, a criticism. Uh, we still had issues to work through, clearly. Otherwise, we would have been uh, done voting today and everyone would be uh, complete with their work and we'd be headed home. So clearly we weren't done. We just got a message from the speaker that the House will vote tomorrow on a revenue package modeled on the bill supported by the governor and House and Senate Republicans are reducing their own funding for the budget this year. Is that helpful that the House is voting tomorrow or is that something that, you know, I mean, it doesn't stop back until Monday and negotiations are still ongoing. Boy, you look surprised when she said that. <laughs> I think, yeah, this <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a dem this is this demonstrates the fluidity of the situation, which is another reason why we wanted to come down here and 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 urge the fact that we weren't going to devolve into finger pointing and all those things because when these situations change, you know I would contend that we saw some of this stuff happen. The Senate went through these fits and starts over the course of the session. The House is experiencing that now. And it takes a lot because some of these things are not Republican to Democrat. Some of these things are very regional. 
um, the the characterization on the revenue package in and of itself as something that the Democrats are gaining from this, like that's a give to us. Um, you will see, I think what we're going to end up seeing when, when there's final votes on this is that you will see Democrats who refuse to vote on revenue and you'll see some Republicans who've changed their minds. This is going to, it's going to be one of those situations where people are voting based on their districts and what they believe is the right course of action moving forward here. So it's not time for us to, well, you know. Is that, is that, are they ready to vote on the revenue package? Yeah, where, where is the revenue yeah. package ready to go? The revenue package was, um, had gotten to the point where there wasn't as much discussion on the revenue package as was as, as much as there was, we can't vote on revenue until we get these other things. So, so I think the revenue was probably closer to a, a package that was that closer to ready to go. So I will leave this room right now and go see what it is they're talking about voting on. But this is, again, fluid. <laughs>